We thought, well, we need to know about this. A wetland in the middle of Waynesboro. Originally when I moved in, this was a detention pond. We got out of our car and stood right there, and there was a great blue heron. And just coming out from where I live down there, you can hear the sounds in the summer of frogs and toads and birds. You know, it it's adds so much to the neighborhood, to the quality. To us, this is a win-win situation for so many people. I enjoy going to see these projects from my own backyard, if you will, that I want to be around them and I like nature just like anybody else. So we want to build and design projects that really people can engage with and enjoy and help our environment and help our communities. How it works is the, the water comes in on the upper end where we're, we're walking uh, 325 acres of urban drainage, so residential, uh, some commercials, car lots, things like that that come through here. Uh, it comes in initially into a sediment floor bay, which is the deepest pool, and the idea there is the sediment mostly settles out there. From there, it spills through a series of deeper and more shallow pools that have different types of vegetation, so give it the most time to interact with those different features and, and maximize pollutant removal. It helps the uh, city of Waynesboro with their MS4 program, meeting their TMDL requirement goals set by the state. So it helps local waterways, you know, downstream of this, where it flows into the South River, as well as everything from here to the bay. We included almost $5 million worth of projects that we foresee having to do uh, right now to meet our full permit compliance by the 2025 date. To, to ask a community of our size to come up with $5 million on its own is, is a um, would be a significant undertaking and really hamper some of our other stormwater efforts, just maintaining existing infrastructure, improving neighborhood flooding situations, things like that, and we're certainly not alone in that regard. I'm convinced that, you know, there's no way that these projects would get built, and so without SLAF money to support these, we wouldn't have these type of facilities. This was, project was actually entirely done um, through state funding. Half of it was the SLAF funding and then we were able to actually match that with Clean Water Revolving Loan Fund. We would not have been able to do this project without that.